but Tina Ortiz Y. Mina was not accustomed to waiting. A former Miss Venezuela and Miss Universe runner-up, she is now the wife of the Miami Auto Parts tycoon Herman Ortiz Y. Mina. Of course, the exceedingly bronzed strawberry blonde was this day's the wife of Miami Auto Parts tycoon Herman Ortiz Y. Mina. At every restaurant she chose to grace with her presence, she was always greeted with reverence and whisked to the exact table she desired. Today, she wanted the corner table on the terrace at Sip Sip, her favorite lunch spot on Harbor Island. She wanted to sit on one of the comfy orange chairs and stare out at the gently lapping turquoise waters while eating her kale Caesar salad. But there was a large, noisy group taking up the entire terrace, and they didn't seem in much hurry to leave. Bettina fumed as she glared at the tourists happily savoring their lunch in the sun. Look how tacky they were! The women, overly tanned, wrinkled, and saggy, none of them properly lifted or botoxed, and the men were even worse, all dressed in old rumpled shirts and shorts, wearing those cheap. Straw hats sold at the trinket shop on Dunmore Street. Why did such people have to come here? Feeling like she had been patient long enough, Bettina stormed into the kitchen. The fringe on her crocheted poochy caftan top shaking furiously as she made a beeline for the woman with a shock of pixie cut blonde hair manning the main stove. Julie, honey, what's the deal? You, I waited more than fifteen minutes for my table. Sorry, Bettina. It's been one of those days. The party of twelve on the terrace showed up before you did. But the terrace is your prime spot. Why on earth did you let those stories take up all that space? Well, the terrace in Red Fishing Cuff is the talk of Glen Cara. His party just voted over from Windermere. That's his royal his money. You see, Mord of the Coast isn't it the most handsome sailboat you've ever seen? I'm not impressed by big boats. Bettina huffed, although secretly she was rather impressed by people with big titles. From the kitchen window, she surveyed the party assembled on the terrace. New eyes. These Aristo British types were such a strange breed. Sure, they had their Savile Row suits and their heirloom tiaras, but when they traveled, they looked so painfully frumpy. It was only then that Bettina noticed three tan. Well-built men in fitted white t-shirts and black Kevlar pants sitting at the adjacent table. The guys weren't eating but sat watchfully sipping glasses, seltzer water. I assume that's the dog's security detail. They could not be more obvious. Do they know that we're all billionaires here on the brilliant? And this is not how we rule. Actually. Those bodyguards belong to the Duke's special guests. They did the whole sweep of the restaurant before the party arrived. They even searched my walk-in freezer to see the Chinese fellow seated at the end of the table. Patina squinted through her Dior X-Day sunglasses at the portly, balding, seventy-something Asian man dressed in a nondescript white, short-sleeved golf shirt and gray trousers. Oh. I didn't even notice him. Am I supposed to know who he is? That's Alfred Shang. He looks like their chauffeur. Does not he look like that guy that used to drive Jane Weinman around in Falcon Crest? From what I hear, the chauffeur is the most powerful man in Asia. What's his name again? <laughs>